This is really good coffee. <laughs> is it? It's very good. Lovely. Uh, friends, we're hanging out with my mate Sam. Sam is one of the founders of Common Folk Coffee Company. Uh, they're a ca cafe, a coffee roastery, uh, and also somewhat of a not-for-profit that's based here on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. Um, Sam, we've been working together for a number of years. I know your story, I know what you're about. Um, in about 30 to 45 seconds, can you give us a bit of a spiel on, you've got a bit of a storied history in how you started this business to where you are at today. Give us a bit of that background. Absolutely, the elevator pitch for Common Folk. <laughs> so, um, I actually studied marine zoology at university and finished my degree. Um, and while I was there, kind of was working as a barista to pay my way through it and um, fell head over heels in love with coffee and the entire process. I mean, at that stage, specialty coffee in particular, the idea of roasting a coffee and really bringing out its unique characteristics and celebrating the farmer who produced it um, was just taking off. And, um, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. So um, when I finished my degree, I uh, met a couple of guys who sort of were like-minded in wanting to pursue uh, great coffee um, and we wanted to bring it to the Mornington Peninsula and, um, and, and here we are in the, the shed, the OG space that we opened Common Folk in. Um, the idea was to source the best coffees we could find in the world, um, pay a fair price for them um, and then work year in year out with the same farmers to improve the coffees that we're serving, the coffees they're selling um, and sharing with like-minded folk in, uh, cool. in, our, in our cafes or at home or in our cafes that decide to, to partner with us as a wholesale customer. And so we're, we're 10 years on from founding, literally celebrated the 10 year anniversary mm -hmm. Um, and you've gone from uh, one space where we're kind of standing right now in Mornington to three different sites for manufacturing, training, production, as well as three other cafe locations throughout kind of the southern Bayside region in Victoria as well. Um, one thing I kind of joke about with a lot of friends and, and, and people that I know when I talk about Common Folk is you've created almost like a cult-like status, both internally with your employees and your people, but also externally with your customers and your community. Talk to me about what that looks like for you guys. Um, yeah, we have been accused of being uh, the Common Folk cult. Um, and I mean, I take it as, as a massive compliment. Um, I think it probably stems from the fact that for us, um, we can't operate to a set of values rather than just, you know, the bottom line. Um, and so aside from the fact that, you know, we want to make profit financially, we also care about our social impact and our environment, environmental impact. Um, and then also the people we work with. So our values are quality, which I think goes without saying, if you're going to roast coffee, you might as well taste it, not shit. Um, but then also uh, community, so our people. Um, uh, and then pioneering, we want to be kind of leaders in what we're doing, making sure that we're at the, I guess, the cold face of the coffee industry. Mm. Uh, and then the final one being integrity. Um, and I think that that's maybe the thing that kind of brings together the, the, the secret sauce that, that gives us our cult-like status. Um, I think uh, the kick is probably we're a place that people want to be. You know, mm. Our industry, hospitality and kind of food and bev has, has had a rough time. Um, and yet we still manage to, I think, hang on to really great people, but also attract great talent. Mm. Um, and I think that's probably part of it. There's a bit of an aura maybe about the place. Um, it's nothing to do with me. I think it's all to do with the culture that the team sets. Um, and that's really what's put us in good stead to survive 10 years, let alone open up new venues. And, and I will throw in there, you've got some good leadership yourself, some of the other founders and some of the other key personnel are doing an exceptional job around here. Now, uh, we've been work working together for about four years or yep. so. And I know when we first started working here, the bit of the running joke was the fact that I don't like coffee. I don't drink coffee at all. Uh, and you've passed me a, a cold brew and I'm going to have a, a quick sip before we, we talk about uh, the last four years of working together. So maybe if you think back to when we first started working together to now and maybe share a bit of your experience and what it's been like working with uh, the Illuminate team in terms of getting you from that one space here to this multiple spaces where you are now and I'm going to hopefully not throw this up. Well, aside from the fact that the only dude with a um, Ray-Bans, a beard and tats who doesn't like coffee in Melbourne, <laughs> oh, um, the Illuminate experience has been pretty bloody good. Um, we came across, because I think at the time um, we were looking with an accounting, ag accounting agency that was kind of going to be able to grow with us and was going to be able to give us advice uh, to take our business to the next stage or where we needed to be. I feel like we kind of came across in our adolescence and you'd helped us mature into adults. I think one thing that really appealed was um, that, that you were in many ways kind of going through the same process yourselves um, and you weren't just, I guess, giving us advice, you were living what we were living. Um, and, and then as well, the values alignment. So um, not only have you saved us a lot of money um, and, and made sure that we're the most streamlined and efficient business from a tax perspective and a, 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 a legal perspective and an accounting perspective, I think you also understood why we were doing what we did. Um, and that's probably made the relationship with Illuminate um, that much 
easier and also that much more exciting. Um, and so, you know, we don't hesitate to um, recommend you to everybody else. Um, and, and, and even to the point where you're happy to make yourselves obsolete. So, you know, we've had an internal sort of an accounts team be mentored by your, your crew um, to do things that, um, that you think, you know, was stuff that we could kind of start doing as we got bigger as a business. And so, you know, some people might say, oh, you, you, you know, you're doing yourself out of a dollar, but actually I think what it's doing is streamlining the, the information you get from us so that your team can do it quicker, but you know, pay by the months. To see if we're getting the same bills and, um, and honestly, uh, I'm very, very happy to pay them. Yeah. Love it, mate. No, that's good. And, um, and over the last year or so, Team Illuminate have moved just down the road from you guys. Yeah. So we're now frequenting and spending plenty of money cult. in your establishment, which is good. Um, so uh, we've got 10 years uh, in the books so far with Common Folk. Mm -hmm. You've got four years in the books working with Illuminate. Thinking about your future, looking at the next five to 10 years and looking at Common Folk, um, the last few years you've found three new cafes, you've expanded production, you're doing a whole bunch of different stuff, the cold brews come online, all those kind of things. Where do you see your next five to 10 years? And thinking about that, what do you think is most important for that to be successful for you, other than having an amazing account? For sure. Um, we're definitely a business on the up. Like we're really ambitious about what we want to do. Um, probably the real driving force behind that, um, for me personally and for the team, is to be able to buy more coffees from our producer partners at Origin. You know, so we're working with incredible people in Uganda, Colombia, um, Brazil, and other origins. We've just got a couple of new come, um, new partnerships coming on board with Mexico, um, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. And so we want to be able to buy more coffee. Mm -hmm. To buy more coffee, we've got to sell more coffee. Um, so really anything that can facilitate that um, because we want to see coffee becoming a viable thing for people um, at Origin rather than a, 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 you know, an old man's game that you know, the, the youth are kind of avoiding because there's no money in it. I mean, historically that's been coffee's big issue. Mm. Um, and so we've just actually taken on board and merged with a company up in Sydney. So we're running operations of Kua Coffee which, are, um, which have a real environmental focus but have been partnering with some of our partners for many years. In fact, we kind of introduced them. Mm. So that's a bit of a match made in heaven. Um, we're also about to um, officially set up our own charity um, to kind of carry an initiative we've been running internally. Yep. Um, and all of these sort of things I think are just kind of um, strengthening uh, the, the foundation that is Common Folk for us to continue to grow. Um, you know, will we open more venues? Yeah, potentially. Um, do we want to welcome more people into the Common Folk family, both people who drink coffee at home and have been buying beans from the supermarket but want to kind of um, want to uh, glow up their, their coffee kind of expertise or whether it's the venues who want to partner with, you know, I guess, ethically minded, sustainably focused coffee roasters. Um, or whether it's bearded accounts who just want to yeah. chop it with three different uh, marshmallows on top. Yeah, always with the three marshmallows. <laughs> We're technically supposed to only give two, but you're only anything. Love that. But yeah, pretty much that's, that's the game. And, um, and, and I think we want to to grow in a way organically but deliberately and so I think we, we don't want to force an issue um, we're not running out to look for venture capital or um, to you know to start franchising what we do you know we do want to have some control that we think that sometimes um, smaller to be bigger is kind of the right approach but we definitely want to focus on what we do and do it better um, so that we can share it with more people. I'm hearing a lot of sustainability, not just for the farmers where you're getting food from, not just to the cafes mm. we are supplying, but also for the business of Common Absolutely. Folk and for the impact you guys have. Yep. Sammy, thank you so much. Uh, pleasure working with you. Um, thanks for making coffee and, and getting me to drink it reluctantly. Um, and uh, all the best for your future. I'm sure it'll be a good one. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Appreciate it. Oh. I know, I know people, it's actually good. I know people like it, but like, <laughs> I just can't.